How are Agilists faring in the pandemic? How are we finding meaning and purpose in these troubled times? How can we connect, inspire, and support each other? We will explore answers to these questions and more. This is Agile Caravan Sarai. I'm Sanjeev Augustine. Deepthi Jain is the founder of the India-based Agile consulting firm, Agile Version, and an Agile coach, trainer, and mentor. She's also the Agile Alliance's India Community Development Chief. Dipti and I met at an Agile conference a few years ago, and since then I've been super impressed with all the c- contributions that she makes to the Agile community. Personally, Dipti loves to connect and interact with people and prefers to call herself a social scientist. Dipti is a dynamic and tireless entrepreneur, and as such, she's the driving force behind many conferences, including Agility Today, agile Thon and Women in Agile and Tech. In 2021, the Agile community is truly global. Since the Agile community was founded in the US, those of us who are based here have long benefited from an embarrassment of Agile riches. Today, Dipthi is doing her part as a global change agent to ensure that Agilists in India and South Asia get to engage more fully in our global Agile community. Dipthi Jane. Welcome to the podcast. I have three questions for you. So why don't we dive into the very first one? Hmm. What are your reflections on the Agile movement thus far? So I am very new, you know, to this whole thing. I just started my journey with Agile in 2014, I would say. I, I started working as a software engineer in 2005. So you see, it's very new. And uh, very much waterfall, comfortably waterfall, loving it. And uh, so when, you know, we were sent for this whole training for Agile, I was like, what nonsense, we were flying planes and we were joking about it. (laughs) And comes day two when is when they start talking about there is no manager and you have all autonomy to decide, you know, how you want to work and team decides among themselves is when, you know, it started settling in and started exciting. Then they shared, I I still remember the training was pathetic and uh, bullshit. And I was like, so then I started Googling about manifesto and I was really, you know, psyched about, wow, that's what I do. That's who I am. So I'm like these guys. And I was like, shit, why I wasn't there when all of this was happening. And uh, I I still feel that it's just amazing thing, such a revolutionary, uh, you know, act and, uh, I'm really happy they did that because that's how we are here. And so that's when, you know, I I mean, it just, it just clicked, you know, it wasn't a big, uh, you know, agile movement in my organization. It wasn't, but then I uh, really um, made it big for myself. So yeah, I I think good. They did that. Good for us. Um, India again is very different. You know, Bangalore is different. Gurgaon is different. Delhi is different. So Bangalore, as they call it, Silicon Valley has a very different culture. People want to learn, people want to explore. So you go to conferences and you will see, you know, mm-hmm. folks of different, yeah, I mean, like different uh, generation, uh, ages and background. And they're not just there to become scrum masters, but to explore what's happening. They love technology. When you come back to Delhi, Gurgaon, there are a handful of startups, no denial, but all these centers are operations support and cost cutting centers. Right. You go Bangalore, Hyderabad, you have R&D. So you see, that's the difference. So now if you ask me, how did I feel about my journey? When I started, everyone suggested go to Bangalore. I was like, no, I don't want to go to Bangalore. They're like, you'll never be able to. Yeah, I feel bad because I'm from Bangalore. Yeah, <laughs> but you were not in Bangalore. See, so you were in US. So they said, I was like, why? I mean, I could not get it. I think for me, it was always about fool didn't know it was impossible. So fool did it. So I, I, could, I didn't understand it then. And uh, so everyone who was doing something in the agile industry, running their consulting or whatever, they were running to Bangalore. And uh, so, so yeah, I mean, the whole agile spirit gave me that strength that we can all connect and we can make that shift and we will tell you what's needed to be done. So yeah, we have to set example. We can't wait for someone to do something for us. Yeah. Fantastic. And that happened in spite of the bad training you mentioned. So it looks like you, you survived that right? <laughs> Thanks to Google, you know, we became the generation who will Google everything. <laughs> Self-diagnosis. Google <and> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Google and YouTube. So you have uh, a very positive spirit and a very positive demeanor over here. And 
this in spite of you know a really bad pandemic and uh, economic crash and all that and uh, that's worldwide right so i know india has been impacted uh, yeah. maybe n- not quite as bad as we in the yeah. us have been impacted yes but i'm interested second question for you what how are you doing personally in the middle of all this stuff so i'll be honest i since 2014 i've been working not just five weekdays but i mean you know weekends as well and uh, out of it all started with passion and it became obsession and then it hit you know the burnout kind of situation and i always felt okay i'm burning out what can go beyond this it it can't be worse like everywhere i'll go they're like oh you have under eyes i'm like okay everyone has they're like no dude you just show them like you know so yeah there came a time in 2019 is when i hit my breakdown and i'm just somehow not feeling good about it so not just you know your professional your personal uh uh well being i feel uh, your psychological and your mental well being is something that we all ignore very much and pandemic is a time when everyone started uh, you know struggling with that on the other hand because i hit my burnout and breakdown like not burnout actually breakdown in 19 is when i realized okay you need to retrospect you need to pause 19 is when i decided you have to cut down on something you just can't be training consulting doing events by then i was running already four to five events a year which mm-hmm. is like which takes a toll on you because just so much of interaction with people uh, so much of you know meeting their needs and uh, so much of you know feedback you receive oh this was not there or what is she doing and what is she up to and you know meeting the social uh, norms uh, what is she doing like is she consulting or how does she make uh, money i was traveling to conferences because i <laughs> i wanted to you know understand how xp conference is doing how is big agile conference doing and uh, what is different about their speakers what is it that they bring to conference what is it not which is not here of course like when i look when i started going to the conferences i would see similar conversation which was very boring after a certain point i stopped enjoying is when i said i am going to run my own you know events which will not be just conferences listening you know to expert when does a commoner go on the stage and express and get the support you know when they want to express so 19 yes agility today was there fun conf was there change agent summit was there agilethon was there uh, you know i was also for working on women in agile and tech and uh, so i cut down a lot on my consulting and i said okay fine just do your operations set up first get done with your websites and your team and everything and uh, so comes 20 and you know the whole conversation with phil 19 i also started working for yeah alliance <laughs> so uh, uh, so then you know uh, agility today happened covid happened i just wrapped up agility so that was last event for agile alliance as well you know which happened in person so uh, covid happened and i thought okay a month two month it will be over and i'll be flying to other conferences so i gave this year to conferences this is what i thought in 2020 and when the reality started sinking in is when i was like okay that's not happening so for i feel like a week or two Uh, is when i felt little low but i am i think i'm such a fool you know i'm so optimistic i see possibilities i when i want something i'm just i don't take a no not adamantly or anything i just can't believe that there is a no i'm like really it won't happen how it won't happen and so then i was like okay what are the possibilities what are the opportunities here as like now we can have anyone and everyone we want yeah. because it's all online so for me it's it's more like that i feel we are blessed we don't have any casualty happening in the family i feel guilty when i say that because i see so much uh, happening outside but yeah so that's how it is for me excellent so i love that you went from let's see from passion to obsession to burn down and break down to then some sort of revival <laughs> yeah. so that's a, that was your personal journey yeah i think we're all uniquely blessed in this pandemic those of us who can you know uh, are in a position to do this our work from home and do it using the digital means that we have so that's wonderful yeah. all right third question looking forward and you're representing a new generation of agilists that are now will be taking agile into the next decade and maybe the next 2 3 who knows how many decades so uh, what's your advice for 
agilists and enthusiasts uh, all over the world, and particularly in India, because that's where that's sort of your center of gravity again. I think they are rocking. I mean, the biggest shift I see from the time when I started working to now, which is 17 years, uh, I feel that uh, kids don't take for no, like kids don't stop when they're told, you know, kids express, uh, I feel very old now. Uh, when I see, you know, uh, such new guys coming up and doing such amazing stuff, you know, in the agile industry, nobody's hesitant, they start their own meetup, and they're doing wonderful stuff. You say, I want to do this, there will be 10 different people doing 10 variety of same stuff. So I think, we are doing really awesome. The only thing that people really need to take care of is their emotional and mental health. They should not operate from FOMO. They should not want to have it all now. Uh, just enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. I think I learned it probably now. <laughs> <laughs> they should they should do it. They should just enjoy the journey. Doors open on their own. Fantastic. So let's see if I can uh, sum that up. Don't operate from uh, FOMO. Yeah. Uh, and don't burn yourself out, but just yeah. enjoy the journey and have fun. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful and wise, wise words for us. <laughs> any, part, <laughs> any closing words as we uh, finish up this talk? Uh, I am grateful that, you know, you had me. I'm so happy about this conversation and I'm excited about you taking my voice to so many out there. Um, I look forward to, you know, meet you in the next conference and so many of us. I'm hoping that, 2021 or maybe 2022 is the year you know when we'll all be coming out the tribe will will gather again exactly <laughs> i think yeah. i'm cautiously op optimistic it may happen this year and it's not definitely next year yeah yeah that's what i'm thinking i hope you come to india okay thank you so much i really appreciate it well thank you for your time uh, thanks for having me